What's up, creeps? It's Jason. Of course, this is Rigamortis here, or Riley, or whatever, Rigamortis Mask. You can go find him anywhere. And by the way, we're getting a lot of compliments on this guy here, I'm man. I'm surprised. I'm surprised, too. I didn't think too many people watch these. Oh, <laughs> Oh, at least six people have watched this thing. Now, you get comments that they're like, wow, I didn't know a young kid knew so much about masks. And I'm like, this guy's a walking encyclopedia. I can't stop this guy. He just spits knowledge constantly, man. That's why, well, that and I like it. This is why you're here, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, you. last week, what we do, we did a Boris Karloff, uh, Frankenstein's monster from the 98 reissue, Don Post reissue line, right? Yep. What the hell? We're back in the we're back in the Frankenstein monster realm, but this time it's the Glenn Strange, a '98 reissue, Don Post reissue, Glenn Strange, Frankenstein's monster, with a little bit of modifications, by the way. When you're going to see this, man. Now, before we let Riley loose here, we undo the collar and he goes nuts on this thing. Uh, let's talk Glenn Strange, right? Because you're like, wait, I thought Frankenstein's monster was Boris Karloff, and it was. He, it started out that way, right? But eventually. Uh, you know, I guess he got too old for the makeup, or he just he passed it on to Glenn Strange. Um, and he did three films, which was House of Frankenstein, 1944. Um, he played Frankenstein's monster in House of Dracula a year later uh, in 1945. And then I think the one where a lot of people know him for is Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein in 1948. And uh, But yes, they did a mask of him as well, obviously. And this is what I'm looking at, which, once again, this is a freaking... A masterpiece, if you ask me. So, before I go nuts and I start slobbering all over this guy, tell me what we got here, Riley. All right, so this guy is our 98 calendar Glenn Strange. And it's funny because the story for this guy kind of starts in the 60s with the whole Hollywood horrors and Universal horrors lineup. At first, they had a smooth Glenn Strange, mm -hmm. which was cast off of the prop head that they used in the, uh, the climax on the docks of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Yeah. And that one was way too small for customers. They wanted a bigger one, so Pat Newman went ahead and made a bigger one in the 60s. And this guy derives from that sculpt. I believe they scanned that sculpt, but I believe it was retooled by Bill Malone. So it's a it's a beautiful, big monster. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you. And then you're probably looking at this, if you're if I can get the close-ups. I know you're, from this angle, you probably can't see it, but you're saying, damn, I've seen a lot of calendar masks, and I don't remember them being that detailed in the paint job. Well, you're correct, because this is not an original paint job. Yeah. This is a, this is a rehaul, a repaint, right? So why, why are we repainting this? So these masks have a little problem. The collectors like to nickname it mask rust. The clear seal and the paint on these guys will yeah. yellow and brown over time, so these masks will look like they're rotisserie chickens, you know? They look like they're left in the sun in Florida too long. <laughs> and so our friend Dave Katz, uh, he's a veteran in the... Dom Post mask hobby. He went ahead and repainted this guy, and I scrounged up my money. I was probably like 14, and I got this guy working summer jobs, and opening this thing was like seeing my newborn son. I absolutely fell in love with it. It's such a beautiful mask. I'm so happy to have it. Look, I would be stoked too, because yeah. the, the detail in the paint job on this guy, he added tons of purple in here, man, which I wouldn't even thought of, but then he really went down into the crevices and the cracks, and he's got a lot of detail out this. And the hair, what's this is not the hair I'm used to coming yeah. out of a Don Post, it's right? It's funny, uh, on a stock one of these, they're kind of a blue-gray, almost like a bit of silver with that clear coat. Right. And the hair on these guys is a little puffy on it, but I love what Dave Katz did is he actually went ahead and hit it with some water and hairspray to get that slick down look that he has in those films. So. Yeah, amazing, man. Yeah. The whole thing. Nice thick pull as you would normally see from a 98 reissue. Uh, and, it, and it actually comes with the box. So, guys, yeah. you can see the box. Um, obviously, this is uh, one of the... one of the, not. I mean, I've learned all types of things. There's actually, what, three that won't have a box, right? Yeah. Out of the 15, which is pretty cool. But this one does. You can see them in the back. And you can actually see the original paint Two job. out of the 15. My bad. Two out of the 15. Excuse me. Um, you can see the original paint job on the back here as well, if you dig it. But um, why have a box? It's a big deal, honestly, to get a box, you know? Oh, yeah. um, I think with these calendar masks, because one, it's cool packaging, because normally masks, you just get it with a tag and boom, you're done, you know? Yeah. But it also, also adds value on the resale and just the collector's market, I believe, right? I mean, I've even seen the boxes individually listed empty on eBay, and I've seen them sell for 90 to 100 bucks, you know? Which is crazy, because like even in the, um, let's just go to the Ben Cooper Collegeville Plastic Halloween Mass at Costume World, 
Um, if you had the box with a, you know, whatever, maybe say the Frankie or something like that, yeah. and it has cellophane, you're adding anywhere from 30 to probably $70 for a piece of thin cellophane. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just like, and completist, I get it. I'm a completist as well. I try to be at least, man. And so as a mask hunter, uh, having a 98 reissue, reissue with a box is amazing, man. Yeah. So, all right. Now, then look, I can't say what you pay for this because this is a rehaul, yeah. right? And uh, which, this get wonky sometimes. Once again, you don't know, different artists have different price points and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to go grab a stock 98, right? Mm -hmm. Glenn Strange uh, on, say, eBay, yeah. what's my price range? What am I looking for? I'd say stock with a box with a tag. I'd say you're looking anywhere from five to maybe even pushing 600. I'd say five Ooh. any day of the week, though. Okay. For any Frankenstein calendar reissue, I'd say it's right about 500 is like the the minimum price, I'd say, box. Yeah. Without a box, you're looking at like 250 to 300 for one of these guys. But some of those scalpers on eBay say otherwise, so. Yeah, no, that's and that's a great price range, and yeah. I would say 100% worth it. It's a really thick pool, guys, as most of the 98, or actually pretty much all the 98 reissues are, ones, everyone I've seen, and uh, can you get this over your head? Probably not, huh? I can. What? This is one of the few that I can actually slide over my head. Oh my God, this but is crazy. Yeah, it is. Monster, it does so. have a cut up the back, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, obviously you have eye so it's wear, it's a wearable copy, obviously, and then, uh, I don't know. We'll maybe I'll see if I can see him squeeze this in his, in his brain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a few I can fit in. <laughs> yeah. So. so this thing's beautiful, guys. This is one, once again. All right. Last question. Yeah. Are you a Karloff or a Strange guy? When it comes so, to Frankenstein's monster, where do you lean? As far as mask, I'd probably land on Glenn Strange just because it's the first one I had in my hands. Yeah. But as far as performance, I'm all the way Karloff, so. Look, I like Glenn Strange, great guy, uh, good friend of mine. Just kidding, I don't know him, I think he's dead. Rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, but I, mean, I know Way he's dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm a Karloff guy from uh, from day one. Yeah. So um, as much as I love this, and actually the paint job on this is incredible, yeah. and it's, the sculpt's great and all that stuff, but I like a Karloff as well. But. I will have either of these in my collection. I'd be happy to have either of these in my collection, yeah. and uh, and then maybe one day um, I'll just we'll I don't know we'll we'll thumb wrestle for it. Every mask collection needs a good Frankenstein. Damn straight. All right, I can't say it's alive. We did that last one. So yeah. how about it's dead? That doesn't make sound very good, but no. does it matter? So all right, guys, we'll see you next time on the Mask More.